welcome back to the second installment of Missions Medical Memories. Previously, we spoke about the history of healthcare facilities in Mission and how they served the community. Equally important, however, is how that community came together to support those facilities. Fundraisers, volunteering, and cooperative initiatives with Mission citizens have shaped its health history from the beginning, allowing the Mission Memorial Hospital to open debt-free in 1925 and to provide its patients with quality care, equipment, and space. One of the most important events for supporting the Mission Memorial Hospital was the May Day Festival. Originally called Empire Day, the first official May Day was organized by the Mission Memorial Hospital Auxiliary to raise funds for the hospital. The celebration lasted all day and had a wide variety of attractions and events for people to take part in. Over the course of the day, you would be able to listen to live music, watch the parade of decorated floats, dance around the Maypole, and watch or even take part in the coronation of that year's May Queen. The May Queen and her party of attendants were selected by mission schools and would all be dressed up in formal costumes for the remainder of the festivities, enjoying the privileges of their temporary celebrity. The tiara, dress, and trophy in the museum's collection were given to the May Queens as a celebration of not only them, but the community that they were part of supporting. After World War II, the Mission Memorial Hospital Auxiliary handed control of the May Day Festival to the Elks and Royal Purple Lodges, who ran it until 1981. The Mission Health Auxiliary Care Society, as it is now known, celebrated its 100-year anniversary in 2020 and continues to support the Mission Memorial Hospital provide non-medical services and comforts to its patients, as well as other volunteering and fundraising initiatives. In April 1925, the Mission Memorial Hospital thanked the Japanese Canadians, quote, who so kindly came forward with help in the form of teams and labor in the matter of beautifying the grounds of the hospital. The Nokai, a union of Japanese Canadian farmers and mission, entered afloat in May Day celebrations. And Nisei school children, second generation Japanese Canadians, participated in the Maypole dance and other activities. The family of one of its founding members, Bunjiro Seikon, donated items of significance to Issei during that time. Bunjiro was famous in the community for developing several successful innovations in farming, including a method of growing forced rhubarb indoors in the winter, as well as the development of an autumn strawberry, which extended the berry season for local farmers. Unfortunately, during World War II, many of Mission's Japanese-Canadian citizens were forced into internment camps, and their farmland was seized and often left unused or was developed into residential or commercial properties. A significant portion of Mission's berry farms were owned by members of the Nokai, so the area once known as the home of the Big Red Strawberry was now suffering from the loss of an important industry. In order to combat this loss, and also to raise funds for the Mission Memorial Hospital, which desperately needed more space to accommodate Mission's growing population, the Board of Trade came up with the idea to put on a strawberry festival. 75% of the profits went towards the hospital, and berry growers were encouraged to improve the quality of their berries by competing for the title of Strawberry King and Queen. To encourage attendance, June 26th, the day chosen for the first strawberry festival was declared a public holiday. Other activities included a baseball tournament, skill games, and even a log bucking contest. One of the committee members, Jimmy Gunn, had the idea to add a soapbox derby as an aside to the festivities, launching the beginning of a whole new iconic mission event, which would eventually grow to overtake the strawberry festival itself. In 1948, nearly the entirety of the area around the Fraser River was flooded when an abnormally snowy winter met an equally abnormally warm spring. This flood affected Mission's environment, economy, 
and crucially, the health of its citizens. This Red Cross first aid kit was used during the flood to help rescue those who had been hurt or displaced by the water, as well as to treat the wounds received from debris floating through the streets. Mission's first female mayor, Ethel Ogle, was a member of the Royal Purple Lodge and chaired multiple relief committees to help those affected by the flood. Having had experience with organizing relief through her role in the Red Cross during World War II, Ogle created a base of operations in the Elks Hall, which served as a reserve pool for people and trucks during the flood. The Elks and Royal Purple Lodges and Mission were responsible for many events and initiatives throughout its history and their members have held many important positions in the community. Much of Ogle's possessions and awards concerning her involvement with the Royal Purple Lodge and as Mayor of Mission have been donated to the museum for the benefit of the city's citizens. The citizens that gathered to respond to the 1948 flood and the ongoing fundraisers for the Mission Memorial Hospital demonstrate how Mission citizens have come together to serve their own community by providing the health resources that they need. This concludes part two of our Medical Memories video series. Stay tuned for part three.